If you go to areas like Turkana or Tobosa uh, or southern Ethiopia, you find people are very native. Almost don't have clothes, very little clothes if they have. Um, they don't have like a well. When, when there is rain, they go gather some water of the rain and drink it. After the end of the rain, they dig like um, half a meter or one meter and collect the dirty water and drink it. The one, one month after, uh, after the dry season come, they are really in, in real tough situation. Standing in a dry riverbed in Kakuma, Kenya, just outside of the main city of Kakuma, and it's a very dry, very arid climate. In fact, even just as I'm talking, my mouth is totally dried out. And uh, behind me is a child digging for water, and this is a very common sight here. You see, uh, if people have access to a borehole, that's wonderful, but most people, most of the people don't have access, and if they wanna use a borehole, they have to pay for it. And um, so it's just, they just don't have the finances, the resources to pay for water. So they dig for it. Rafat, how, how far are we from the town right now at this riverbed? We are in the town. Where, where is the town? Here is the town, my brother. So the price of two bottles of water is, a, is what a mason get after full day work. So a mason will not buy water, of course. We we'll drink, we'll, we'll, we'll drink this dirty water. And uh, unfortunately, they dig very shallowly in these riverbeds. There's a lot of uh, garbage and things that you can find along the banks. And so the water is not safe. And this is just the situation here in Kakuma. Bolhol ministry is not something new in our hearts. It's from before, but we, we didn't have ability to do. Uh, in Africa, Governments are not helping community. So they have a, lo a lot of rain, but then rain goes away and people don't have any means to drink water. So to dig a well, it, the cost of digging a well is something like $8,000. In most situations, a family don't have $8,000 to just dig a well. And, some, and what happens even, they come and dig a well for free for people and then they build them a house of their religion. They tell them, we give you um, a well for free, but allow us to worship our Allah. Now our Christians are suffering. Either they accept this or no water. Our idea is as simple as this. We are forming a team of church planters, evangelists, and borehole diggers. They go together. They visit a, a, a community or a village or a, or unreached area. They stay there, they dig a well and breach at the same time. For example, most probably digging a well will take like two days, but we will not do it in two days. We'll, we'll do it to in, in 10 to 15 days on purpose. They, they study the area, do some survey for water, and in the evenings, show God's story, show Jesus' film. They continue surveying and showing in the evening, and visit uh, the other team members, visit community, tell Bible stories, day time. So, if the community have, has a church, for example, they can do a workshop. If the community doesn't have a, ch a church, they can plant a church. Anyway, you need to really plant a church, you need 10 to 15 days of Bible storying. So at least people can listen to 10 to 20 stories from the Bible. And also watch God's story and Jesus film several times and they understand. And then they go to another village to do the same thing, but leave some leader or go visit them if we have started already an, uh, an oral Bible school. Then we go again and again to follow them. My hope is like this. One team can dig like 20 wells and, and plant 20 churches 
in a year. And as the sun sets behind me, I want to just challenge you, wherever you're at, to start praying for spoken word, for the gospel message they're bringing out, for the training. Pray for the people they're trying to reach. Pray specifically for the people of Turkana, that we can reach these people. Pray, pray that God will mobilize his servants to do this. And also, I want to encourage you, pray that maybe God will bring you here to help.